my bro. I, I was I was an intern for a while because they actually had canceled the internship programs and then they bought me back. Um, and then when they bought me back, they hired me in the promotions department. So basically, to mm-hmm. get paid, I only, I only I think it might have been six dollars an hour, mm-hmm. if that, at yeah. the time. And so I was getting paid a little bit of money, you know, to be in promotions. And then um, my man Ron White, salute to my guy Ron White, still my guy to this day. He was a music director at the time, and he was like, "Yo, you need to." He said, "You ever thought about being on the radio?" And I was like, "Nah." He was you like, said "No." Nah, cause I hadn't, you know. What I mean, oh, okay. I, I mean, I, shocked, I, yeah. yeah, I was just, I was just happy to be there, mm-hmm. and like, you know, every now and then I would jump on with Willie mm-hmm. Will, yeah. you know. But I never thought to myself oh, I can get my own yeah. show or anything like that. And he was like, "Yo, you should, you should, you should be on air." Ron White said this, okay. And so Ron White is the person that started, you know, allowed me to voice track and 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 put me on air, you know. So that's why I got mad love for you know Ron to this day. Like you know, certain people change the trajectory trajectory of your life, and you know. You you should always honor those people, you know. For mm-hmm. for 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 even 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 if you're not on the the great terms with them, or even if you don't like the person no more, you should always honor them in your story. Yeah. By yeah. telling them that, you know, yeah. but telling telling that story about them because you can't erase that. Right? The only reason why I wanted to know the how long is because we are definitely in the era, and you talk about it in the book where everyone is, especially with the younger people, and I'm I try to think back if I was like that, even though. I catch myself still being like that is like the overnight success like how long did it take that's why I wanted to stress like 30 <laughs> years in radio broadcasting how long did it take of you struggling before you got your first big like uh and, well I don't want to say the six dollar check but that you know oh I didn't get a huge check in radio till breakfast club wow because um Breakfast Club was the so that's sep- like easily ten years, right? Lo- yeah, longer that because it was that that was Breakfast Club was the seventh radio station I worked at. So I started in nineteen ninety eight, and then I got with Breakfast Club in two thousand ten. Yeah. So what's that? What what's that? But you were, terrible you were working at with the Wendy Williams show. Yeah. So I worked at four radio stations in Charleston, mm-hmm. and then I was with Wendy Win. But I worked with Wendy for like a year and a half for mm-hmm. free. Mm-hmm. You know, and then when I got put on salary, I was making seventy thousand dollars a year. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I I got my own morning show in Philadelphia, and I still was making like seventy grand a year, mm-hmm. seventy seventy five grand a year, something like that. And then I went back home. I had to go back home to South Carolina because I got fired four times. Yeah, and that was my next one. Why were you getting fired so much? That was just a game. Like it wasn't even about anything that I was uh, necessarily doing. It's just like that's just the business of. Of radio, like I, I, when I started at Z ninety three Jams, that's why I was an intern. That's when I was in promotions. That's when I worked in programming. I quit, you know, there to go work at a station called Hot ninety eight nine. My man George Cook, who is uh the operations manager in, at at K one hundred four in Dallas, he's the first person to give me a full time job on radio. Still a great mentor of mine to this day. And even then, I was making nineteen grand mm-hmm. a year. And then I, you know, went to Columbia after I got fired from Hot ninety eight nine. They they fired George. George is who hired me. They fired him, brought in a new guy, Corey Hill, who was the program director, and then Corey fired me because he Corey wanted to bring yeah, in his own people. Of course. So that's just the way the game yeah. goes in radio. Now, like, during this whole journey, what's your mental health looking like? Are you starting to second guess whether this is your journey? I really want to dig into that mental health state when you're going through that roller coaster wave because you even ended up back at home with your parents at some point. I did. Night. I did the first time. The first time I got fired from radio, which was Hot 98.9 in Charleston, I was a little. I was a little fucked up mentally because I didn't know that I could go do radio other places. So in my mind, you're like that was my one shot. Yeah, because I mean, you, I didn't think I'm from <laughs> yeah, I'm from course. Monk's Corner, South Carolina. I know that area. I know I can have success in Charleston. I never even thought about you know doing radio other places. And um, I, I, it wasn't until I did this uh, demo tape, um, but it was actually because I used to do my man Dr. Robert Evans and his son, my guy DJ Bless, loved them to death. They had a record label called Never So Deep. And so I was doing A&R for them. And they put out a compilation album and it was like all of their artists, because they had a subsidiary deal with uh, MCA back then. That's when MCA was a, a, a big label back in the day. And so they had a compilation album and I narrated the compilation album, but I put it together like a radio show. Oh, okay. And so we were just sending that out, you know, around the country. And um, one of the program directors in South Carolina named Mike Love, he was like, yo, he sent me an email. He was like, yo, Yo, do you do radio for real? And I'm like, yeah. And he was like, man, come see me. And so I drove an hour and a half to Columbia, South Carolina from Monk's Corner. Met my guy, Mike Love. Salute to Mike Love. 
And Mike started putting me on in Columbia Thursday. I think I was on uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday in Columbia. Or maybe Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I don't remember. And that was your second after getting fired from the first? That was, was yeah, that was the, but that was the third station I oh, worked at. Oh, that was at. the third. Yeah, okay. and, I, and I loved working in Columbia because my wife was going to the University of South Carolina, so that's in Columbia. Okay. So now I had a reason to be up there every weekend. You okay. know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. so once, once again, that's God. Yeah. Like yeah. you can't, you cannot script that. Like yeah, that is nah. all God. That's God putting all of those pieces together. Like I want y'all to be with each other. Yeah. You know, here, right? Yeah. Even if y'all go through ups and y'all go through downs, I still want y'all around each other. Because we did break up for a year one, at one point during that time. We've been together 26 years. Mm -hmm. But long story short, I ended up in Columbia. That station, Big DM flip formats mm -hmm. so I ended up going to work for the station that they bought which was Hot 103.9 which was the big hip hop station in that market and from Hot 103.9 that's when Wendy Williams got syndicated on Hot 103.9 so when they would come to the market her and her husband I would just show them love you know mm -hmm. what I mean like make sure they was good with whatever they needed you know take them to the clubs stuff like that and that's how we forged a, 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 a relationship you know and, um, and it wasn't just they, they forged a relationship with other people in, around the station at that time too like you know um, my homegirl Venom she had a good relationship with them as well. So we all just had a had a relationship, you know? And that's how all of those dots ended up connecting. Okay. How was it working with Wendy Williams? Uh, best best and worst time of my life. You know? Tell best us. and worst best and worst time of my life just because like Wendy come from a she comes from a different era, you know? Like there's been time I remember I remember sitting in the studio offering some input and I Shut the fuck up and do it my way or get the fuck out. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Shut the... I don't want to hear shit from you, motherfucker. Like, so it was like... Oh, the, the, this it, was like before uh, H... Well, the nowadays HR. I man, would be I, terrified. I, I, I think about that shit all the time. Like, wait, was there HR departments back then? It couldn't have been. <laughs> Not the shit we was really doing. Knows, I think also when you're young, I don't think anyone really knows how to use HR. I mean, I could be wrong with today's culture of cancel culture. Like, yeah. people are like more... But I remember being like sexually harassed, like all types of things, because I did not know how HR worked. I just knew I needed my job. Yeah. And I wasn't willing to do anything to jeopardize and, it. And that's, you know, back then it was like, um, you know, I had I, I was I had personal relations with them and professional relations oh. with them. And you saw how everything turned out with, you know, her and her husband. So it was like all of that was a very tumultuous, tumultuous. I don't know if I'm fucking saying the word right. Tumultuous, tumultuous, tumultuous. tumultuous. <laughs> a fucked up situation. It was a it was all fuck. It was a very all fucked right. up situation. So her talking to, be in. to you like that too also is like because the lines were blurred, right? So that's why she was talking. To you. So what was the highlight of it? Just working with Wendy, working with one of the greatest media personalities of all time. You know, regardless of what her, you know, personal shortcomings may have been, mm -hmm. professionally. She's one of the fucking best to ever do it, you know, from TV to radio. Like, I mean, the things that I used to watch her do as far as like, you know, show prep, like, you know, Wendy was a person who really lived. She lived, you know, the culture that she spoke about. She wasn't one of those people who got in front of the microphone and gossiped mm -hmm. because, you know, she was performing. Mm -hmm. That's really who she was. And uh -huh. so for me, it was just that's not I mean, I don't, I don't want to do the gossip thing, but it was yeah. just like be authentic, yeah. be who you are. Like yeah. I would see, I would be with her all day and then come sit with her in that studio and do the show and watch her detail our day. You know, understand what I'm yeah. saying? So it's just like everything was content okay, for okay. her. I was in the oh, store wow. and this happened. Or we were driving and this, like it was all content. And so it's like, for me, that's like, that's how, that's always been my approach. You know, mm -hmm. like your life, your life is your best content. That's why I'm able to write three books. Cause I'm not performing. I'm literally just showcasing and sharing all of these different things that you know I've experienced, all these different things that I've learned, and I'm not afraid to to be transparent. Like, how could I be afraid to be transparent when I I've heard Wendy Williams talk about being on crack, smoking, smoking, sniffing coke, cooking the coke, smoking the crack, throwing up on the radiator because she was so high, and then the the fucking radiator cooking the cooking the throw up like. But but that's an that's an that's yeah, real. Yeah, it's an yeah. amazing story. So if I come from being next to that, why wouldn't I be just as authentic? Plus we yeah. hip hop. Yeah. So think about all the stories we've heard the Jay Z's tell and the Biggie's tell and the Scarfaces and the Killer Mike, all of these people that we love. So it's just like I I want to be that same type of storyteller. So was it in that moment that you realized that authenticity was the key to success in radio? Oh yeah, I knew that. But so, I knew that before Wendy because I was already okay. admiring 
people like Wendy. I was already admiring um, Petey Green. Petey Green, that's my all-time favorite radio personality. Like, so I, I already knew okay. authenticity was what separated you, period. Like, it's ironic that the name of this book is called Get Honest or Die Lying because that could have been the name of my first book because literally, I've always, my daddy used to always tell me when you lying to people, or he, was, he used to say specifically him, you lying, you think you lying to me, but you only lying to yourself. And so I never ever wanted to be that person that is, you know, lying to themselves. Cause what happens is you end up volunteering those lies to other people. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's happening in this era that we're in now in social media. Like, you know, just everybody feel like they gotta perform. So who's really truly being themselves? Yeah. Everybody's showing up with a mask on. Yeah. 